And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now with the offseason officially being underway and with free agency in the NFL draft fastly approaching, it is that time of year where rumors begin to swirl, whether it be regarding free agency signings, mock draft implications, or trades that could potentially be made. And the Lions have their first batch of news and rumors to come out. And today we're going to be talking about those free agency rumors. Everything from free agents that have interest in Detroit to free agents that Detroit has interest in and a potential QB controversy hinted at by our general manager, Brad. Home. So starting off with the free agency news, we have three free agents this season, three players that are set to become free agents in this 2022 NFL free agency class that are either going to have interest in Detroit or rumored to have interest in coming to Detroit to play for the Lions or free agents that the Lions may be going after because they fit schematically, positionally, and of course, they just are good players for the Detroit Lions to go out and sign. So the first player that we are going to be talking about today and the first player that is rumored to have interest in the Detroit Lions this offseason is Allen Robinson. Now Allen Robinson is a 28 year old wide receiver currently rostered by the Chicago Bears, the division rival Chicago Bears. And if you're a Lions fan, if you've been a Lions fan for the past four years, you are going to know who Allen Robinson is because Allen Robinson has consistently given the Detroit Lions so much trouble each and every time we play them. Now, last year was a little bit of a dip off from that trend. Allen Robinson didn't have his biggest games versus the Detroit Lions, but... For a lot of his career with the Chicago Bears, he has given the Lions secondary a lot of trouble and has been the Chicago Bears' number one wide receiver for a multi for multiple years at this point. But Allen Robinson is unhappy with the organization. He played on the franchise tag a year ago and has made it very, very clear that he doesn't want to return to the Chicago Bears. He went there to win a championship. He went there because they were building up this defense, because Mitch Trubisky was a young, up-and-coming quarterback. But now the Chicago Chicago Bears are not playoff contenders. The Chicago Bears have a long way to go with a brand new head coach. And Allen Robinson, even as early as last season, saw that his investment wasn't worthy of it and decided that he wanted to leave. The Bears didn't want him to leave. They franchise tagged him and he was forced to play another year under Matt Nagy. But with the new coaching staff and with him being an aging wide receiver, I would have a hard time believing that both sides would want to come back to each other. I would have a hard time imagining that with this new coaching staff, Allen Robinson would want to go back to the Bears, and I would have a hard time imagining that the Bears want to start their new regime building around a wide receiver that is starting to exit his physical prime and starting to you know leave behind some of his better years. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean Allen Robinson is going to be bad. That does not mean that Allen Robinson is a bad wide receiver. Allen Robinson, in he has played eight seasons in the NFL totaling over 500 receptions, 6,400 yards, and 40 touchdowns. And when you think about the fact that he tore his ACL in 2017, where he only had one reception for seven yards before eventually tearing that ACL, he really has put up over almost 6,500 yards and 40 touchdowns in five seasons. Last year was a very down year. He saw the fewest targets of his career, and with the exception of his torn ACL season, he saw the lowest amount of production of his entire NFL career. Now, part of that was Matt Nagy scheming away from him. Part of that was teams scheming for him. And part of that was the consistent rotation at the quarterback position with many of those quarterbacks not having worked with Allen Robinson in the offseason and not really having the chemistry built up with their supposed wide receiver one. So Allen Robinson is a former player of Detroit. He played, he grew up in Michigan. He you know, went to high school in Michigan, was recruited by the University of Michigan, didn't play there, but 
but he is somebody that is from Michigan and has, you know, seen on multiple times on his social media is putting out stuff, you know, Detroit versus everybody and putting out different Detroit related events and vi different Detroit related things. And I mean, it doesn't seem like he's against coming back to Detroit. It doesn't seem like he's against playing here for the Detroit Lions. And it makes sense for the Lions. They need a number one wide receiver. He's going to be a little bit less valuable right now than he would otherwise be with his production throughout his entire career career, I'm willing to overlook the one down year for the potential of having a bounce back season, right? He's a guy that has had multiple 1,000 yard seasons. He's a guy that has had multiple 1,000 yard receiving seasons and multiple 10 plus touchdown receiving seasons. And that is with quarterbacks like Mitch Trubisky, quarterbacks like Blake Bortles and Nick Foles. His best quarterback he's ever played with was probably Blake Bortles. And if your best quarterback ever is Blake Bortles, that says a lot about your career so far and he's still finding a way to produce he has still found a way to be productive in the nfl even with subpar quarterback play and jared goff would by far be the best quarterback he's ever played with the lions offense very well could be the most talented offense he's ever played with in his career and Allen robinson can bring a dominant x wide receiver to the lions and really complete what the lions want on offense they have their top 10 offensive line they have their serviceable quarterback for the right now for the current day and for next season they have a top 15, top 20 running back in DeAndre Swift when he's healthy. They have, you know, a young star wide receiver in Amon Ross St. Brown. They have a top seven tight end in the NFL. If they get that number one wide receiver, their offense can truly be complete. And that's not to say, right, you don't build that. That's not to say you don't need a better wide receiver too, or maybe a better depth running back, or maybe, you know, eventually upgrade a quarterback. But Allen Robinson can really be the final piece that we need to have a competitive offense and what we need next season for our offense to take that next step. Now, another wide receiver that very recently was quoted saying that he would be interested in Detroit or is being rumored to have interest in the Detroit Lions this offseason is Christian Kirk, the wide receiver from the Arizona Cardinals. Now, Christian Kirk is 26 years old, having four NFL seasons under his belt. And in those four seasons, he has totaled over 250 total touches, both receiving, rushing, and kick and punt return, totaling for over 3,050 yards and 17 touchdowns. He is going to be a cheaper wide receiver, much cheaper than Devontae Adams, much cheaper than Allen Robinson and Chris Godwin, but you're gonna get borderline wide receiver one potential. Last year, he had 900 plus yards on you know a decent amount of receptions, but he wasn't the number one for a large majority of the year. Christian Kirk is sitting behind AJ Green. He's sitting behind DeAndre Hopkins. At the very best, he is wide receiver three on that roster, not to mention Rondell Moore taking his snaps, not to mention Zach Ertz midway through the season taking some of his targets, and yet he still found a way to almost produce a thousand receiving yards and a good amount of touchdowns in an Arizona offense that did not feature him. Christian Kirk is not going to be as dominant as Allen Robinson, but he might be a better value pickup as he's going to be a significantly cheaper wide receiver, as he is going to be somebody that is going to give you borderline wide receiver one production on a significantly cheaper contract while being two whole years younger and having a lot more tread left on his tires to play in the NFL. So Christian Kirk is another wide receiver that has been rumored, has been talked about coming to Detroit, and I think he would be a really, really good pickup for the Detroit Lions if he becomes available on the free agency market. Now, the last free agent that I want to talk about today is somebody that we've also talked about before, somebody that we've speculated about, but has recently come out and been rumored that he could see interest from the Detroit Lions, and that player is Jabril Peppers, the safety currently rostered by the New York Giants. Now, Jabril Peppers, much like Christian Kirk, is only 26 years old, but Jabril Peppers had five seasons under his belt in which he has totaled 333 tackles, 21 tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, four forced fumbles, five fumble recoveries, and four interceptions. And that doesn't even include his kick and palm return ability, which he also contributes to the New York Giants. Now, he is a young player who can play multiple roles everything from linebacker safety occasionally an edge rusher he can be a quarterback spy he can be a slot cornerback or a kick and punt return monster as well he played at the university of michigan so that storyline that connection is there for jabril peppers if he would like to return to detroit and be a hometown hero he did it for the michigan wolverines and could possibly do it for the detroit lions but overall 
He's just a really good safety. And I think Aaron Glenn sees a lot of the same things that I had mentioned before, that versatility, that ability to play linebacker, safety, and slot cornerback, right? They had a lot of injuries at cornerback last year. You could put your Bill Peppers on the boundary if you really, really needed to. They had a lot of injuries at the linebacker position. Jabril Peppers can step in there, be a weak side linebacker, or even be a coverage linebacker in the middle on passing plays or plays that you're very confident are going to be passing plays. Or you could just have him paired up with Tracy Walker in the secondary playing at that too high shell and playing just overall really really tight coverage with two really athletic ball hawking safeties over the top and whereas Tracy Walker is more of that safety you avoid right he doesn't necessarily still show up tremendously on the stat sheet Jabril Peppers is a guy that takes the football away Jabril Peppers is a guy that does show up on the stat sheet who makes plays and that's not a diss on Tracy Walker I think Tracy Walker does a lot of different things very well that that Jabril Peppers does not but I think Jabril Pepper shows up a lot more on the stat sheet because the opposing team is trying to avoid James Bradbury because the opposing team would try to avoid Tracy Walker deep. That's going to give Jabril Peppers a lot more opportunity to make those plays on the stat sheet. And I think Jabril Peppers would be a perfect fit. I think he's exactly what Aaron Glenn would be looking for as a defensive coordinator. Now, with all those free agency rumors out of the way, those are the big three as of right now, right? Allen Robinson has that Michigan connection. Jabril Peppers has that Michigan connection. And then Christian Kirk just possibly being a really young wide receiver that has hasn't necessarily had an opportunity to be a wide receiver one in a system that utilizes him 100% in his entirety. So those free agents could be possible looking points in this year's free agency class. But one thing I thought was really interesting that I wanted to touch on today was the potential QB controversy that the Lions could see this offseason. Now, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have been very, very clear with this, saying that Jared Goff is their guy. Jared Goff is somebody that is going to stay in Detroit for the very least another season is going to be a quarterback on the Lions roster going forward. But they've also heavily, heavily hinted at the fact that Jared Goff might not be the starting quarterback. They've hinted that they're not opposed to QB controversy. They're not afraid to a quarterback competition in the offseason and putting the best player on the field. Now, to me, this hints more towards the draft than towards free agency, right? If you look at free agency, the best quarterbacks available are Mitch Trubisky, Dwayne Haskins, and Marcus Mariota if the Raiders decide to not re-sign him. And those players, I don't think really push Jared Goff for a starting spot, right? Jared Goff, for all of his flaws and all of his statistical lackings, from a season ago, he did play pretty good at the end of the season. He did have the Lions on a roll. He did have the Lions win three of their last seven games. He did have the Lions win three straight at home to end of the season and end of the season in his final five games, throwing for 11 touchdowns to just two interceptions, whereas his season stats hit 19 touchdowns and eight interceptions. So that last five week span really saved Jared Goff's season. Jared Goff a season ago had a 67.2% completion percentage, which was the highest completion percentage of his entire career, had 3,200 yards, 19 touchdowns, and eight interceptions while missing three games due to COVID and a knee injury, right? They happened kind of at the same time, kind of at a similar time. They overlapped a little bit, and Jared Goff missed three of the final five or six games for the Detroit Lions. He missed the Seattle game, he missed the Atlanta game, and he missed the Cleveland Browns game due to that COVID illness. Jared Goff did finish the season really strongly. Again, the last five games, you have 11 passing touchdowns to two interceptions, but with them kind of hinting at there could be a quarterback competition, that tells me that they are looking at a quarterback in the draft. That tells me they're looking for a Malik Willis or a Sam Howell in this draft class. If you're staying at 32, it's more likely that you're going to get Sam Howell, but if you're willing to trade up and give up a few draft assets, Malik Willis is the Lions guy right now. He is the guy that they can't stop talking about, a guy that you know they trained at the Senior Bowl, who saw development under Ben Johnson at the Senior Bowl. Malik Willis sees seems to be their guy. And yes, Jared Goff will be here next year. I don't think that was ever a question, but with Brett Holmes kind of hinting that, you know, we're not opposed to a QB competition, right? If the right guy shows up and he outperforms Jared Goff, that guy's going to be our starting quarterback. That is the news that I think is really really interesting because there's not really a free agent that's going to challenge Jared Goff. And the only guys that I could think that might challenge Jared Goff for the starting role this offseason is Malik Willis 
or Sam Howell. So with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching the video. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think about this Detroit Lions news? Do you think there will be a QB competition in the offseason? Do you think any of these free agents would be a good fit for the Detroit Lions? And what free agents would you like to see the Lions target in the offseason? But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions!